December 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Hosea chapters 7 and 8 from the Old Testament. Whenever I want to heal Israel, the sin of Ephraim is revealed and the evil deeds of Samaria are exposed, for they do what is wrong. Thieves break into houses and gangs rob people out in the streets. They do not realize that I remember all of their wicked deeds. Their evil deeds have now surrounded them. Their sinful deeds are always before me. The royal advisers delight the king with their evil schemes. The princes make him glad with their lies. They are all like bakers. They are all like a smoldering oven. They are all like a baker who does not stoke the fire until the kneaded dough is ready for baking. At the celebration of their king, his princes become inflamed with wine. They conspire with evildoers. They approach him, all the while plotting against him. Their hearts are like an oven. Their anger smolders all night long. But in the morning it burst into a flaming fire. All of them are blazing like an oven. They devour their rulers. All of their kings fall, and none of them call on me. Ephraim has mixed itself like flour among the nations. Ephraim is like a ruined cake of bread that is scorched on one side. Foreigners are consuming what is strenuous labor produced, but he does not recognize it. His head is filled with gray hair, but he does not realize it. The arrogance of Israel testifies against him, yet they refuse to return to the Lord their God. In spite of all this, they refuse to seek him. Ephraim has been like a dove, easily deceived and lacking discernment. They called to Egypt for help. They turn to Assyria for protection. I will throw my bird net over them while they are flying. I will bring them down like birds in the sky. I will discipline them when I hear them flocking together. Woe to them, for they have fled from me. Destruction to them, for they have rebelled against me. I want to deliver them, but they have lied to me. They do not pray to me, but howl in distress on their beds. They slash themselves for grain and new wine, but turn away from me. Although I trained and strengthened them, they plot evil against me. They turn to Baal. They are like an unreliable bow. Their leaders will fall by the sword, because their prayers to Baal have made me angry. So people will disdain them in the land of Egypt. Sound the alarm, an eagle looms over the temple of the Lord. For they have broken their covenant with me, and have rebelled against my law. Israel cries out to me, My God, we acknowledge you. But Israel has rejected what is morally good, so an enemy will pursue him. They enthrone kings without my consent. They appointed princes without my approval. They made idols out of their silver and gold, but they will be destroyed. O Samaria, he has rejected your calf idol. My anger burns against them. They will not survive much longer without being punished, even though they are Israelites. That idol was made by a workman. It is not God. The calf idol of Samaria will be broken to bits. They sow the wind, and so they will reap the whirlwind. The stock does not have any standing grain. It will not produce any flour. Even if it were to yield grain, foreigners would swallow it all up. Israel will be swallowed up among the nations. They will be like a worthless piece of pottery. They have gone up to Assyria, like a wild donkey that wanders off. Ephraim has hired prostitutes as lovers. Even though they have hired lovers among the nations, I will soon gather them together for judgment. Then they will begin to waste away under the oppression of a mighty king. Although Ephraim has built many altars for sin offerings, these have become altars for sinning. I spelled out my law for him in great detail, but they regard it as something totally unknown to them. They offer up sacrificial gifts to me and eat the meat, but the Lord does not accept their sacrifices. Soon he will remember their wrongdoing. He will punish their sins, and they will return to Egypt. Israel has forgotten his maker and built royal palaces. And Judah has built many fortified cities, but I will send fire on their cities. It will consume their royal citadels.
God, thank you for using uh, metaphors in the Bible that we can understand. Even though a lot of these stories are thousands and thousands of years old, the one about baking completely makes sense to me because I bake a lot. The one about the oven, um, we don't have ovens like this anymore, but they would heat them up and then they could just leave them there and these embers would kind of simmer uh, and then they could stoke the fire. They could move the embers around and, and cause a big flame to take place so that they could start baking again. And I think about this in connection to what it says after that, that their anger smoldered all night long and then it burst into flame in the morning time. We do that. We, we have things in our lives that kind of just simmer. And they're anything that is not the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If it's not one of the fruits of the Spirit that is simmering in our hearts, then we should do everything we can to get rid of it. Because what's going to happen is it's going to sit there like it did in that oven. And it's just going to simmer and simmer not really going to do a lot of things until that one situation happens where maybe they did the same thing again. Uh, maybe somebody else comes in and says, oh, this person, and, and then you're off and running. Uh, whatever it is, that next strike that happens to the embers, it causes this big flame to burst out. So the anger that smolders all night long, but in the morning it bursts into a flaming fire. And I also see uh, our sinful thoughts this way as well. Again, not fruits of the Spirit, right? So I have a situation I'm dealing with right now uh, that's part coveting, part maybe like a jealousy type of situation. And it's simmering right now. And I've acknowledged it and, and you and I are working on getting rid of, rid of it. Because if I don't, potentially that could turn into full-blown sin. Not that it's not already, because I am thinking about it. It's still simmering there in my heart. But I could actually act on this. And if I act on it, not only would it damage my world, but it would damage quite a few other people's worlds as well. And then you go on to talk about uh, Ephraim uh, mixing itself like flour among the nations. And, and in this cake, mixing in with the nations, uh, it's burnt on one side. It's not done on one side and it's burnt on the other side. And since I bake, uh, I obviously use flour a lot in my cakes. And flour is used for a couple reasons. One, uh, the protein from flour provides structure for things. It provides the walls that hold up the pastry or the cake or, or whatever it is that you're, that you're creating. Um, the other thing that flour does is it adds texture, interestingly enough, to whatever it is that you're making as well. And I think about us mixing in with the nations. Now, in this case, Hosea is talking about it in a bad way, um, that they're becoming common to the world and they're actually assimilating themselves and their beliefs in with the world. But we are called to go out into the world to talk about you. And I think about our telling of the gospel and our testimony as that flower. Does it build up? Does it build up that structure, those walls? Does it provide that for non-believers? And then part two of that, does it also provide structure and support for believers? Like, are we in there encouraging other people, um, praying for them, uh, walking alongside of them? And then when it talks about Ephraim, uh, the cake is ruined because one side's burnt and the other side's not done at all. If the flour is not completely set, then your cake will crumble. Your supporting structure will fall apart. So if we don't have that life that matches our testimony, if we don't have faith that matches our action, it's going to fall apart when we go to talk to non-believers. Um, also, our relationships with other believers, if we aren't encouraging them, supporting them, working on those relationships as well, then we, again, don't have that structure, that support. And when we need somebody, it may not be there. It may be that undone part of the cake uh, because we haven't worked on those relationships. So God, thank you for putting two um, ideas, two kind of stories in Hosea that completely make sense in my world. And allow us to, one, take a look at our lives. Do we have anything in our lives that's smoldering? 
that is not a fruit of the Spirit? What is it that we need you to prune from us? And God, we just pray for you to prune. We know that it's very painful when you do that, but we also know that we come out stronger for you and for your kingdom when you do that pruning. And then part two, allow us to look at how we are building our lives. Does our, our life internally look the same as it does externally? Do our actions match our words? Do we just sound really good on paper, but we don't really follow through? What does that structure look like? What do the textures of our lives look like? Is it really uh, thin and surface, thin like a crepe? Or do we have this like structure and deepness of, of a three layer cake where we've built relationships and have those multi layers of textures? God, allow us to just examine our lives today in light of reading Hosea. Uh, and are we like Israel and Judah who are assimilating with the world? Or are we truly living a life that's reflected of your, reflective of your glory and transmitting a testimony that is just so powerful for you and your kingdom? God, I just pray all of this in your son's name. Amen.